too. Now, my wife had no idea I'm going to teach on this. When I give you this title, that'll be the first time hearing it just like you. But I'm going to probably feed off of some of her message. We'll probably talk about the heart because I want to teach a message called the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter. And so I'm just going to follow how the Spirit of God leads me. There might be some things that, some good foundations she laid on yesterday that I can build on and some things that you will learn and grow from just through both of our ministries. So, uh, the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter. You could turn it around and call it the matters of the heart. But we're going to call this one the heart of the matter. Let's look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. It's good if you have time. <clears throat> Uh, praise God. Real bad reading. Well, that ain't, I don't like that either. So we'll just take our time. I like this better than what I'm hearing it. It sounds like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> well, this is a good message. And it? we'll be, y'all live stream orders. Be, just be careful. We'll get it together. I, ain't no rush. Anybody got run nowhere? Just tell me what you want me to do, but I don't. Give me either a bad ring where I don't hear. Do y'all hear the bad ring? Okay. Okay. Where are my top musician uh, technicians at? Just tell me when to go. We'll just keep see the devil. We don't worship God, praise God, been high in the spirit. So now he's mad and he's on the sense. So just tell me just what you want me to do. I know Tim, they'll figure it out. Just tell me what you want me to do because this is not good. <clears throat> praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at them out there, they're putting their finger up. But he's, we got to, we know this goes out all over the world. So they got, they live streaming down. So we put this out every Sunday. It goes everywhere, other states. So tell me, they will say I'm good, Tim. You good? He got some EQs, things figured out. Everybody good? Am I good? Yeah. All right. All right. The, those of you that have your Bibles, turn to me uh, with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. We're talking about the heart of the matter. When you have a chance, read the whole chapter. Uh, a lot of times we just cherry pick scriptures and we don't read them in context. But this was a, Jesus was basically taking the most religious men who thought they was the most educated men, and they were according to the law because he was dealing with scribes and Pharisees and literally put them to shame. They was trying to uh, tangle Jesus and tangle Jesus in his words, and they didn't realize they was talking to the word. <laughs> I mean, he, he was, he's the word made flesh. And just because they had all these degrees as Pharisees and, and doctors of the law and steeped in Jewish religion, they was trying to entangle Jesus. And, and you can't take entangled the word. He wrote the Bible. He's both the Old and New Testament. So we're going to pick it up in verse, um, let's start with verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence. Well, you know, you got the Pharisees and you got the Sadducees. And when it said he put it the silence, you know, in other words, another the amplifier said he muzzled them because they came up with all this stuff about a pen in whose image should you give it pay lawful to pay tax. And Jesus said, render the Caesar that is Caesar and God, that's God. He had so much wisdom. They was trying to trap them up. This whole, I'm just telling what was going on where you put them to silence. And then they got into the resurrection about this guy who married his wife and the, all of them died. And then all the brothers and all the sisters uh, married the same 
person or the marriage the same wife and who wife would she be in the resurrection he put in the silence there they was trying to entangle him with the law not realizing he is the word made flesh and so see the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection they believed that if you died you died just like a dog there was no 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 resurrection so it said when the Pharisees heard that the Sadducees uh, he had put them to silence, a better termination, shut them up or muzzled them. They gathered together. They began to see the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection. So that's why they were sad, you see. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And if you didn't see that, then. So he shut them up. Now the Pharisees said, let us deal with it. I want to give you the context because this is amazing and very interesting scripture here. And so they said, okay, he didn't shut them up, but we, we, we know the law. We, have, we got our degrees, our schools of theology. And so the Bible says one of them, which was a lawyer, which is very interesting, asked him a question, tempted him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all of thy soul, with all of your mind, and all of your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, I know you asked me about the first, but I'm going to tell you what the second is too. Because Jesus... Be discern that they it, it was the, the motive was wrong they was trying to entangle him with words he said I'm going to tell you something that you didn't know I'm going to tell you the first and the second he said the second is like unto it thou shalt lo lo love thy neighbor as thyself and on these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets two thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind, that's the first and great commandment, loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. First, and then love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, on these two. Now, you got to understand that the Old Testament has over 630 laws. The Ten Commandments just a set of ten of them. That was laws about what you couldn't eat. That was laws about you couldn't touch dead carcasses. That was laws about you couldn't take two type of threads and put. They had all types of laws. On the Sabbath day, you couldn't talk this, you couldn't do that. 630. Now, how many of you know it's hard to keep 630 thou shalt not? And so Jesus is saying, he said, so he's tempting him. He knew that much. Like out of this whole big of laws, which is the greatest? thinking that he's going to catch Jesus, oh God, that he's going to go, well, now hold it, now uh, wait a minute, uh, now uh, can you repeat the now? Just without flinching, without flinching, thou shalt love. The greatest commandment is the love, the, out of all 638, all, all those things, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. In other words, he went to the heart of the matter. It's about your heart. That's the first and great commandment. Do you love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength? And the second, he said, you ain't even answer, but because I know you're trying to tempt me, let me teach you something. Because you got to remember, the Pharisees were steeped in Jewish religion anyhow, but this was a lawyer on top of being a Pharisee who thought he knew the law. What he was saying, I know the law better than you do. So I'm going to trap you up since you shut up the Sadducee. You ain't going to shut me up in Jesus. Now let me tell you something, man. <laughs> the first and great commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. He went to the heart of the matter. And then he said the second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. He said on these two, if you do these two, everything else will work. Forget about all them 638. See, all the old and new to all of those promises, Jesus came to fulfill the law. The law kill it. But he said, since you want to know what is the greatest, is the love of the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, 
all your mind and all your strength. In other words, and then love thy neighbor as thyself. That's very important. Because when people are disrespecting you, it's a reflection they don't love themselves. And I, you know how people treat you is not a reflection of you. Don't make someone feel bad. They, 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 you know why they don't love themselves? Because they don't first know how to love God. So what Jesus dealt with was first of all, love and the heart from a vertical standpoint. He says, love the Lord thy God, all your heart, all your soul. In other words, before you can love your brothers and sisters, you got to know how to love God. You can't even love. Let a husband love your wife. A husband can't love wife till you know how to love God with all his heart. You can't love people and treat people right until he said, listen, I'm going to not only give you the first, I'm going to give you the second because you think you're a turn. I'm going to teach you about the law. There's something you didn't learn in law school, young man. Because when you first love vertical and you love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, if you can't get that one thing right, everything else is going to be left. See, that's why people struggle loving with one another, dealing with her, her attitude, because their love with God is not correct. And how can you love God who you, you, you say you haven't seen and can't love your brothers who you see every day? And Jesus is teaching these doctors of the law a lesson. He said, if you do that, everything else will work. Healing will work. Prosperity will work. All debt cancellation will work. See, we got to all these other laws. And he said, if you do these two, on these two, hang. Think about a curtain. See, Jesus didn't come to do away, away with the law. He came to fulfill it. Love fulfills the law. Because if you love me, you won't steal from me. If you love me, you won't commit adultery with my wife. If you love me, you won't commit a, a false, uh, a, you know, lie on me. If you love me, see, love fulfills. That's right. That's right. All those 638. So love is the master law. On love hang all those other scriptures in your Bible. And until you get it first, vertical, first, first things first. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul. And that's what we've seen, and that's what was happening at this altar this morning. That, you know, worship is love being returned to love. We just love God with all our heart. And when you, you get weak, you yield to him. And there are people fell at the altar. There are people tears. I began to watch the Spirit of God move in this place because we was manifesting our love toward God. Then once you do that, then now you can love horizontally. And from that we get the cross. Vertical love first, then horizontal. That's what Christianity is all about. You can't love your brother, your sister, and me and no one until you fall in love with God. Until you get the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, that's why y'all guys have an issue with me now. And your brother man, you've gone to school, you got religion, but you're still lost. You're not as smart as you think you are, attorney. Let me teach you something. I am the word. In the beginning was the word. I was there in the beginning. And I know the law. And you're doing all these other things, washing cups, praying long prayers, dressing up. He said, but your heart is far from me. The heart of the matter is, where's your heart at? Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. You keep a bunch of rules, but you don't know God. And the reason you struggle with your brother, your sister, your wife, people vertically to the left and right of you is because you ain't got a real relationship. I mean, horizontally, is because you ain't got a real relationship vertical first. That's the first thing. See, God, love, God, God, God there's, a, there's a scripture we don't even preach about anymore. God is a jealous God. He said, thou shalt know the God before me. That don't mean a man and woman. That mean a car, a house, a career. God don't want nothing you to put it. Because when you do that, everything else, all the other scriptures and prophecies begin to work on this hang. Some of you women know what I'm talking about. You got 
curtains hanging on a rod. And there are hooks on that rod. The weight of those curtains hang on that rod. And one rod, my hook might be healing, deliverance, salvation, debt cancellation, total restoration. We're going after all these other things. And Jesus said, if you just do these two, all that hang. In other words, if you ain't got love, you take down the rod, the whole curtain fall. And there are a lot of people going at the laws and all this and that and praying all the right prayers to do it. But the heart of the matter, he's talking about your heart. Your heart ain't right. He goes straight to the heart of the matter. And that's why, because if you knew who I was, you'd be loving me, but here you are trying to tempt me and catch me up in my words. You're going to always struggle with people horizontal around you until you, first of all, the first and great commandment is get your relationship right with God. Vertical. Amen. How can a man love his wife even as Christ loved the church when he don't even know how Christ loved the church. How can a woman truly submit herself to her husband when she don't know how Christ has submitted to God? See, and everything starts, horizontal, I mean vertical, excuse me. Everything. And we're trying to, well, how I'm going to get this and, and the blessing this and get me a car here and move that. And we struggle with people all around us because our love life is not right. Our heart Motive of our heart, the heart of the matter. Everyone say the heart of the matter. See, the heart matters to God. Man look at on the outward appearance, but God looks on your heart. And I know some of you are hooked up. I've seen some of you hooked up your shoes, and hooked up the colors. And man, we got some beautiful women. And I'm not, I'm not just, you know, and some of you, and it's okay. I like to dress up. I don't just throw on anything. I, I look at myself. But guess what? God don't care nothing about my tie. He don't care nothing about my pocket handkerchief. He, he's looking on my heart. God don't care nothing about if you drive, drove up in a Lamborghini, if you got a Mercedes. I don't care what she, Will, who you trying to impress? Well, God says, I'm looking at your heart. You got to get a relationship with me first. If you'll get a relationship, you'll get a good car. You'll get a job. You'll get promotion. All that other stuff, them promises you try, it hangs on love. I remember my mama used to have them old curtains. You know, we had them expensive stuff. We just had them old, you know, them, remember them little, some of you know what I'm talking about, you sticking little white ones. And them curtains got too hanging. All you had a little house nail. And, and if, that, if the rod fell, everything came down. <laughs> works by love. Healing, prosperity, all these things you're trying to get works by love. So we're talking about the heart of the matter. Jesus could have went about this and that. He got right to the heart. He said, these two things. And then love your neighbor like you do yourself. Huh? No, of course, he changed that in the New, New Testament, you know, after he got over to St. John uh, 13, I think it's uh, 34, 35, says a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I love you. Because see, Back then, Jesus hadn't come yet. He wasn't coming with something new. He was asked to quote in the Old Testament. I'll show you in a minute. Because what if you don't love yourself? And he said, love one another, love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, what if you cutting yourself, shooting yourself, abusing yourself? I don't want your love. So that, that's why Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't change it. He said, but if you do these things, in other words, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. You don't want to kill your, your, your dog killed, so don't, don't kill the other. Amplified in verse 38 and 40 puts it this way. It says, this is the great and most important principle, the first commandment. He says, verse 39, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. These two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law. Now, you know what I mean? All them other healing, prosperity, blessing scriptures, give, tithe them works by love. Every, without love, nothing works. Though you give your body to be burned and have not love, it'll profit me nothing. 
Do I have tongues that men and angels can prophesy, understand mysteries, can interpret and have not love? It profit me nothing. If the first, he's, talking about, he's talking about agape, not human love. He's, talking about, he's not talking about the blood pump. Either. He's talking about your spirit, man. And you can have all of these things. If you don't have love, he said all the law, all the word of God, faith works by love, healing works by love, tithing works by love, everything works by love. And you can have all of that stuff and not have love, it won't profit you nothing. Understand, I'm going to have faith to remove mountains. See, we're going after all this stuff and we're missing the, the foundational thing, the first and great commandment and the second. on these two, just two. It's hard to keep 638, but if you can remember two, I ain't got no time to be going through no book of no laws. Let's see, which am I breaking down? And then God said, now I'm going to simplify this thing. These two and all that other stuff will work. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Love seeks not his own way. Love does not depend on or, 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 or requires his own way. It's not puffed up. It's not full of pride. Huh? Believe in all things, hope in all things, it never fail. He said, if you get these two, if you get a real relationship with God and love God more than you do anything else, if God, you give God your heart, then you won't have no problem vertically. Because when the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, it's unconditional. We struggle with people because we don't have a true relationship with God. I know some of you might, don't get mad at me, Jesus said it, get mad at him. That's why you struggle ver vertically with people who are not just like you, who don't do exactly like you, and you, you know, because see, it's a heart issue. I'm back to my wife, it's a heart issue. Amen. See, there are sins of the spirit. Sins of the flesh, we know someone came in here, Scott's drunk, smelling like, looking for, man, he drunk. Yeah, you can have unforgiveness and, and in your heart, we can't see that, but it's just as devastating because that drunk know he needs help, but you sitting there with this attitude of heart, the heart of the matter. You sitting there judging someone, mad at someone, still got bitterness, residue of, of hatred, struggling, but it ain't like marijuana that we can smell. So sins of the flesh, we can oh, don't come in here smelling like reefer. <laughs> Yet, sometimes people can't smell unforgiveness and strife and envy and jealousy. They're sitting in your heart. Oh, y'all don't see my wife. My wife, you and her got, nah, I ain't even talked to her. This is new to her too. I don't. I talked to the Lord, and He gave me this before my wife ever preached. So Jesus answered and dealt with both the vertical and horizontal aspect of love. He says, "You want to know what's first? I'm going to tell you what's first." And God is still saying the same thing. Do you still love me? With all your heart, all your soul. It's a simple question. It's a simple question. In the book of Revelations, they had prospered. They had got wealth, better homes, better cars, and they forgot about God. And he says, I got someone against you. You've left, left your first love. Sometimes it's just simple. Do you really love God with all your heart? We start out loving God, but then someone, something become more important than God. And God said the first commandment. So Jesus answered and dealt with both the ver first, see, first vertical. You got to get it. That's where the cross come from. Say, so you, can't, you can't follow Jesus, just the vertical. Then he said, and second, that's where the, this part come from. Up, down, and then second. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, fall in love with him, and then you won't struggle with these vertical relationships. And so why say God first? Because he loved you first. That's all. Look at, look at, look at uh, little John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Before you ever repented. Before you ever thought about coming to church. 
when you was getting high, when you was on drugs, when you were back in the booth in the corner smoking reefer, you was on the dance floor bagging it up. When he thinking about God, don't y'all be looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, well, not me. I was born saying, no, you're a liar. In sin, we were born. You must be born again. But what's so amazing about God, he didn't wait till you and I repent, change our mind, quit drinking, quit partying, quit running, quit lying, quit, you know, whatever you were doing. He said, I love you unconditionally. First. And it's something about when you find out someone loves you first, what is it that you're seeing me? What's lovable about me? I'm on the streets of Iowa doing drugs, pills, alcohol, cradles, listen to the Funkadelics. Would you like to dance with me? We'll do the cosmic slop. <laughs> Under bridge. And God loved me. Amen. Oh my God. And once I found out that God loved me first. Woo, we love, so my love first. The first is, is the love God back. Because no one loved you unconditionally first. No one can love you. Not your mama, not your daddy, boyfriend, husband, wife. I don't care how sweet they are. God loved you first. So the first commandment is to love God back. With all your heart, all your soul. All your mind and all your strength. And second, now you can, I don't struggle with Sister Betty or my sister. I don't matter what you do, because I love God. I got the heart of God. I can forgive like he can forgive. See, because I got a relationship with them. People don't have a strong vertical relationship, struggle horizontally with people. That's why they don't want to carry the cross, because I'm going to show you that love is a part of suffering. I'm going to get into something here. We love them. Now put up my other scripture. See, why he said, and second, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, oh, no, man, nothing, but it's a universal debt. You owe me this. I owe you this. Well, I don't like how, it don't matter how you like. God love you. Oh, no, man, not, but to what? To love one another. For he that loves the what? Has fulfilled the whole law. Isn't that what Jesus said? On these two commands, the whole law is fulfilled. Look at, look at verse 13 or whatever. Yeah, verse 10. Love does not wrong or do. Uh, love does no wrong to no one's neighbor. It never hurts anybody. If you love me, you won't steal from me. If you love me, you won't bear false witness. If see, love fulfills the law. Huh? You, don't, you won't do all those 630. You don't have to do all those things. Why? Therefore, love meets all requirements. God is love. And is the fulfilling of the law. So I'm going to take all those 638 and condense them to just two. All your two things. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor. Because it's hard trying to keep all them other things. And you can't keep them no how. Because the law kill it. The law don't have the power to change you. The law kill it. It's the spirit that gives life. The law was just a, a, a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It curves him. See, if it wasn't no law, you'd get out there and be doing 135 up and down deep river. But they had to say, we got to make a law because there's some crazy people. <laughs> so they put a law. We can't stop them, but we're going to slow them down. See, the law can't change you because if in your heart, you're going to speed anyhow. You might not speed on deep river, but time you get on, I don't start. Bah! See why? It's in your heart. It's the matter of the heart. How y'all get what I'm saying? The law can't change your heart. And, and, and I hate this because of Paul. I ain't even gonna go there because it's such a pollution. But it be, would be a beautiful example if people weren't so polarized. Because I believe in life too. I believe in life before in the womb and I believe in life after. But you know what? I believe in guns. I have guns. You don't believe it. Mess with my wife. <laughs> you a pastor and you got to go, yes. It's legal. Well, gun violence. And I'm not knocking, I'm not being insensitive. People that lost loved ones to gun violence. 
But I'm just trying to say you can march against gun laws, these type of laws, all you want. It ain't going to change people. I'm not called to do that. I'm called to teach the word. Why? The only thing that's going to change is the heart. It's a matter of the heart. When the Holy Ghost hits y'all, it don't matter what color, race, background, left, right. When the Holy Ghost hit the heart, that's what I'm believing for. There's revival of people where God begin to change the hearts of the father back to the children. Because that's what changes you. I'm going to show you something. Come on, somebody, get with me. Jesus got right to the heart of the matter. He said, it's about your heart. He said, if your heart was right, you wouldn't be struggling. Now, here we go. When you talk about love, most of us use the word passion. Oh, she's such a passionate kisser. See, look at you. See how I call her some of you mind there? Let's feel it. Y'all come say, hmm. See? See what I'm talking about? And it is, I'm not saying you're wrong. You're just incomplete. He has such a passionate love. Oh, such a passionate love. But when you talk about love, passion is love. But passion don't mean what we think it means. Passion literally means pain and suffering. See, I'm educating you. Look it up. I ain't just talking about the biblical depth. You can look it up in Webster's Dictionary. It'll talk about pain and suffering. Y'all remember 2004? What came out? Mel Gibson, the passions of Christ. Was it about how he, it was about his suffering. They showed the God of Gethsemane. They showed the whip and the cat of nine tails that ripped his flesh off. They showed how he was pierced in his side. It was the passions of Christ. You see what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Now you say, well, what, what does that got to do with the heart? The heart, anything you do, you're passionate about. Anything you love, you're passionate about. So if love then means suffering, this is what I'm going to put the statement up, Mill. Passion means suffering. So whatever you, you, you really love, you're willing to suffer for. Oh, God. Have, see, 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 this ain't about a kiss. This ain't about a hug. Because I'm passionate Taught my wife, I'll, so, I'll get up early. I'll take a bullet because I love her. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Women that are passionate about their kid, they'll, they'll work two jobs so that they can have a better education. Why? They love them. I love my babies. And if I have to, I'll suffer for them. I'll get a third shift job and have to, I'll, I'll lose sleep. Why? They're passionate. Anything you love, you're, you're passionate about. You're some suffering. If you love playing one of these instruments, then you're going to get rid of your social life and say, I'm going to study. I, I, I ain't got time to run and be playing. Better. I'm passionate about this, praise God. So I'm going to suffer. I'm going to stay up late. See, I'm passionate about the ministry. I love the ministry because I love people. And because I'm so passionate about it for, for the first three, four, five years of my ministry it, 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 I, I wouldn't even take money why? because when you're passionate about something, it ain't about the money I'm not in this for the income I'm in this for the outcome I want to see you healed. I want to see you. Why? My passion. When you really love her, and it makes me stay up at night. It makes me, while y'all guys are asleep, two and three in the morning, I'm getting translated. I'm putting these messages. Why? I'm passionate about it. And it means I got to suffer. That means I got to lose some sleep. That means that somebody got to take a day. That means that when stuff come against you, I cover you because I'm passionate for you. Because I love you, I'm willing to suffer for you. So when people talk about me, when people love me, I can take the suffering because I love you I'm trying to give you a new definition of what true love is it's from the heart anything you really love or anybody suffering is involved Christ loved us that's why he suffered for us his heart, we was on his heart, we his bride. He was in love with you. And if it means going to the cross, I'll suffer. That's why it was called the passions of Christ. If you be the son of God, come down. He wouldn't come down. Why? Because he loved us. He was passionate. This thing could be over in three days. And I'll bring them back into my father's house. He was passionate. So passion involves suffering and pain. That's why he took your pain. 
your sickness and say, why? He loves you. He bore your pains. So I'm trying to give you a new definition of just mm, passion. No. You're going to have to suffer a little bit. Percy Sledge, put it this way, when a man loves a woman, I'm the old school lookouts for, okay, nothing will stop him. He'll get a well for what he's trying. Why, he's passionate for her. Huh? Come on. Let me bring it up a little more there. I think I'll go with try Al Green. He said, love will make you do right. Love will make you do wrong. Sometimes it make you stay up all night. Why, I love that girl. Me and George get mad at him because I, I had to suffer. Why, she, she misunderstood me. She ain't taking my phone call. I'm trying to show you. Real love involves suffering. So we was on Christ's heart. It was the man's heart. He loved us with all his heart. And when you love something, someone, if you love basketball, you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to go to gym early and stay late. Shoot 300 three point shots, then three from different positions. You guys have to freak that day. The, the people who love, like, like the LeBron James, the Steph Curry, they, they, they suffer. They put their body through all kinds of because they love the game. It's a principle. Amen. And Christ loved us Amen. with all of his heart. And when you love God with all of your heart, you're willing to suffer for him. I'll read the word. I'll come to church. That's why I pray when I don't feel like praying. Why I love God with all my heart. It ain't about, look, that's the, and once you get that one right, and look, all this other healing, clothes, cars, money, favor will come. All that hangs on this. This is the greatest commandment. And it wasn't nothing new. Put up a Deuteronomy. See, if this attorney was so smart, he would have known the law. He's a lawyer. Guess you just got, because you got a title, don't mean you know everything. Because Jesus wasn't quoting nothing new. He was just quoting the Old Testament. Everyone shout the heart of the matter. He said, hear, O Israel, hear, church. The Lord God is one Lord. Look what he said. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. There it is, same thing. He was quoting what he should have known. With all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And these words which I command thee shall be where? In, it's, it, come on. In the heart. It's about your heart. Loving God with our, not just God, look what he said to, to do with these words. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children. Thou shalt talk to them when you sit by the house, when you walk by the wayside, when you go to the Walmart, when you lie down, when you rise up. Teach them. Teach your children to love God with all your heart. Teach your family to love God with it. If you do this and love one another, everything else will begin to work. Clothes will come. Healing will come. Praise God. Prosperity will come. Promotion will come. But you're trying to do all that other stuff. And he said, just these two. The heart of the matter. He said, I want this thing to be in your heart of your children. Teach them to love God with all your heart. That's why I'm so proud of all our men. But one of those men is my son. And I didn't force him to be in the ministry. I didn't mess him to do that. He's got in this thing. He's taking so much. And I see him loving God with all of his heart. He ain't doing it as unto me or as unto, he's doing it as unto the Lord. He got his own vertical relationship with God. He know how to pray for himself. I've heard him pray in tongue. I hear him praying in the spirit. And that's why he don't struggle with nobody else. And that's why God is blessing him. Not because he's my son. It's because of his relationship with God. And his willingness to say, I love it. I'll suffer for the minute. I'll sacrifice. I'll start here late. I'll sweep the floor. I'll do whatever. I'll get my dad whatever it takes. On the next broadcast, if I have to come out here and I see him sometimes while y'all sleep, he's out here putting the next broadcast together. Why? Cause, not because of me. Because of God. 
I love God with all my heart. And don't you think God sees that? He said in secret, he will reward you openly. Let me show you these two scriptures to give you an example about when you really love someone, you're willing to suffer for them. Jesus loved us. We're his bride. Come on. If you, how, you know, when, who, you that got married at one point, that, that woman was your bride. And you had to suffer for her. Come on. I mean, you had to come out of your pocket. You don't go, baby, and wash your car. No, you don't wash. I wash the car. Fuck why she's a lady. You don't wait till you get married to all these things. Listen, if a guy won't open his door before you get married, he ain't going to change after. Don't think he's going to become a gentleman after. <laughs> what you waiting on? You got arms just like me. No, you got to be willing to suffer for people you love. Why? I'm going to show, I'll, so, I'll take a bullet. For my wife, you ain't going to put your hands on her without going through me. Why? Because if I have to enter into sufferings, bring it on. Why? Why, why am I willing it? Because I love. She has my heart. It's a heart. It's a matter of my heart. Now, I ain't going to do that for you. That, I care for you, but I ain't going to jump in the middle of a fight. But I, I. Let me go ahead. But, but we see who? Jesus, who was made just a little lower than the angels and a little while crowned with glory and honor because having did what? Suffered. He loved us. Why did he suffer? He'll tell you in order that by the grace, unlimited favor of God to us, he did it for us sinners that he might experience death for who? Every individual person. He don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, white, black, Hispanic, Jew, Gentile. This love is indiscriminate. We, we discriminate with our love. Jesus said, I'll suffer for you. That's why I went on the cross. Go ahead, drive the nails through my hand. And then once they did and the cross fell, his flesh tore from the weight of his body. But he wouldn't come down while he loved us. We was on his heart was the heart of the matter. We drop down to verse uh, 18, I think. For because he himself, Jesus, in his humanity, he emptied himself. He didn't do this as God. He did this as a man. He became a human being just like our high priest. Has done what? Suffering. Being tempted, tested, tried. He is able immediately to run to the cry and assist relieve those that are being tempted, tried, tested. Being exposed to what? Suffering. So he was willing to, why? Why is he suffering? Because passions of Christ involve suffering. When you really love someone with all your heart, it's going to involve some suffering. Every real relationship is going to have to go through some suffering. It ain't going to be good all the time. It's going to be some rough nights. But you got to suffer through it if you commit it. Why? It's unconditional love. I'm not here to condemn or whatever, whatever. You can make whatever decision you want, but I'm just trying to say, well, I've been married now, uh, what, 38, 37 years, 37, 38 years. I'm close, and you don't know either. Don't be looking at me like that. And there's been some suffering. Why? Anybody you love, you're gonna have, it's going to be some tough times. In the early days, they're like, I'm out of here. You're where? Your mama ain't going to let you go back. Mine either. So we might well work this thing out, girl. <laughs> we had to suffer. Why? Passion. And why am I suffering? For y'all guys, just to stand here and use that as a testimony about the suffering I went through because I love you. You have to pay a price to stand here. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus suffered for us. Why? What was his bride? You're willing to bride. Come on, when you really love your wife and you and both in bed and you hear something outside the door or the window outside, you don't go, hey, girl, get up and go down there and see what it is. That ain't nobody that's willing to suffer for you. You need somebody, give me my baseball bat or whatever you got. My saw, hey, I got this. You, babe, you stay right here. Lock the door. I got this. Yes, <laughs> Come 
on, somebody. So, see, we've kind of been narrow with the word passion. Passion involves anybody you really love and got a long-term commitment. There's going to be days of suffering. Every married person in here is just going to say amen. You don't have to tell me, but you know I'm telling the truth. Say amen. Say it. She ain't going to get mad at some of them men. Some of the women like, they ain't going to get mad at some suffering. It's going to cost you something. It costs Jesus his life. It costs for his bride. Okay, now stay with me, people. Now, whatever or whoever you love the most, Lord have mercy. I ain't got lost in time, but that's okay because y'all ain't started the clock. I ain't worried about it. Should have started it. <laughs> who, 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 whoever or whatever you love the most will drive your behavior. I remember one night, I almost, just almost drove me crazy. I love this. <laughs> I'm tired. What you want me to do? It was the early day. She wouldn't talk. I'm a communicator. I come up a family. We give cards. We say Merry Christmas. We say I love you. We say dude. We put up trees. We give out cards. Good night, Mary John. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Ellen. Good night. We say all them stuff. They don't talk. They didn't communicate. And I'm telling Joyce, I love you, and I'll do this, and what are you doing? And she just won't say nothing. And I'll go, I'm a communicator. I don't wait until that. I bought her some flowers. What you buy me flowers for? They're going to die. What? What type of girl? Is... So I'm suffering. Because I love this girl, but I don't know how. And I ain't too proud to beg. So. We went through all of this stuff. It was driving my behavior. What's wrong with you? Boy, this morning, some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Bought her flowers, she talking about them that. Bought her diamonds, she talking about, well, what? It ain't nothing but a rock. That thing was 6,000. <sighs> it's driving my behavior. Because I was trying to show her, but she didn't know how to appreciate this. Because her background, she talked about her daddy, some of y'all. She was stifled. So we had two backgrounds. That's what we're meeting. And we both suffered. And she would just be crying. I wouldn't even know how. You know how it is. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I think she talked about that too. You know something wrong with him? Just tell me what's wrong. Don't make me suffer trying to figure you out. You got a mouth. I'm voicing what every man feel now. They're suffering. Some of y'all got. Phew. But it was her background. Her dad had, you don't so you shut up. You don't talk. You don't do nothing. You don't show emotion. And so she'll just be crying sometimes. And so I told God, I said, I can't take this no more. I walked in the room. Hadn't done nothing. Just walked in and George in there, tears. My face was just snotty. I, I just shut the door and walked out. I said, God, if you don't do something now, I'm out of here. I'm tired of this stuff. I'm tired of suffering. So I walked in and she, I said, that's it. I'm out of here. She said, no, don't go. It's not you. It's this lifetime movie. She wants him back and he won't take her. I'm like, girl. Well, talk to me. I'm about to leave you. You talking about a lifetime movie. Suffering. Anybody you love. But you know the good thing, we worked through all, she crying now, but she don't tell the truth. I got stories like that. Did you, I'm, our mama almost, we almost didn't get married because of my mama. I ain't, even going, I ain't got time to even talk about it. But I had to suffer through a whole lot. And her daddy. And her mama too. None of them said, they I ain't coming. 
Bob said he ain't going, but Judy said she ain't. And my mama said, I ain't. and George wasn't coming. She said, I ain't going. This is on the morning of the wedding. I ain't gonna tell y'all about the pressure. Talking about suffering. But because I love her, guess what? See, you know why I'm telling y'all this? Because y'all saying, wow, I had passion. She was in my heart. See, your heart, love her. It's the God, it'll, Jesus loved us so much, it's inconceivable the price he paid. So when they're talking about the passions of Christ, so it's a matter of your heart, what's really in your heart. Now, Mark, Matthew 10, verse 36 to 38. Wow. <laughs> a man's foe shall be that of his own house. That word household in the Greek is relative. That's why people who put you to the most suffering folks this close to you. Your greatest battle. I ain't the, the, the drug addict out there. It's not the, the, the guy who, you know, who's, who's you know, down there, you know, at the dope houses. It's not the, the alcoholic house. It's somebody on your house. Why? Because you love them. They're on your heart. And so the enemy knows that. And notice what the next verse says. It immediately goes into what I'm talking about because first and great commandment. Now watch this wording very carefully. It's to love the Lord thy God with what? All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And, all your, and second, that's the vertical. Second, love thy neighbor as thyself. He that loveth father or mother more than me. Did God tell you not to love your mama or your daddy? He said, you can't love them more than me. It's not worthy. He that loveth son or she, the first and great commandment, I got to love God first. Because I love God and had a vertical relationship with him. I was willing to put up with Joyce and all that stuff I didn't understand. Because my greatest battle wasn't coming out. It was in my own house. Trying to get her to understand me, our backgrounds was clash. But see, love supersedes all that. There was something in my heart that just said, hang in there. Hang in there. See, the woman that y'all saw preaching yesterday was made. You don't, when the Bible says when you find the wife, you don't just find the wife, they're made. The word of God made her. She had to let go of this and realize I got to change this. I don't care how crazy my family. Well, we both realized we had crazy people in both our family and we had to do what the word said. I don't care what they were doing. And don't, if you in a family, my family, I ain't calling y'all crazy. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I love God more than if you love son and daughter. That's why the devil messes with some of young kids. Mess with your mom and dad. He's trying to affect your commitment to him. But when you love God more, it's like, I love you, mama, but I'm not, you didn't save me. I love you, boy, but I'm going to church. I love, that's my mama. She, she loved God more than me. She said, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to church. He said, more than me, it's not worth than me. And he that not take up his cross, there's a suffering, see. So your suffering come from your own rep, folks, it's close to you. And father, it's not worth than me. So, so, who you love the most drive your behavior. You ever had a son, a good daughter, come home and all of a sudden she just got an attitude and poking her lip at you because she done fell in love with this old, this thug. And she's driving her behavior. And she don't know, she like forgetting all about what mama, the sacrifice, what daddy and how the good house and that. This guy driving her behavior. You can stay out. You got to be in my 12. Everybody, that girl, that's when we first go out. And driving her behavior and rebellion is coming out of her. What's that? Whoever you love the most will drive your behavior. You ever seen a, 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 you know, a woman that's used, so love starved that she's just put up with abuse and keep going back to it? Know that the guy ain't no good. But what's it? He's driving her behavior. It's a hard issue. You don't understand that it's all pretense, it's just using you. You're just another one on this list. And the way you break that, you got to get, you got to start loving someone greater. Oh, God, I'm hearing it somewhere. You can't use willpower to just break certain addictions of, to bad habits. You got to pursue something greater. It's got to be something you love more. Moses was, was raised an Egyptian with money and wealth. But the Bible says when you come to years, 
He refused. There was something greater. Even though there was riches of Egypt, Pharaoh's son, to be called the daughter of Pharaoh, but chose rather to suffer because I love God with the people of God because he saw something greater, which was Christ. When there's something greater on the line, there are people who know that cigarettes, the Surgeon General writes it, these cigarettes may be, are hazardous to your health and will cause cancer and death. But they still just, because they love the drag that they feel. And it's an addiction. Watch this. So the thing is not throwing away the cigarettes, getting, you got to love something greater. Old man Tommy had smoked all of his life for 50 years since he was 14 years old. And his wife tried to get him to stop. Tommy stopped smoking. He'll just blow it all in her face. She couldn't stop him. His mama, his daddy, son, please stop. No, just, he wouldn't stop. He was addicted. Say, say, why? Because he loves, it's driving his behavior. What he, he loves is driving his behavior. Huh? His own doctor told him, if you'll just get rid of these cigarettes, your blood pressure do better, you'll come up, you'll add this. But he wouldn't listen. Why? Because he loved, whatever you love will drive your behavior. And then finally, one day, his six-year-old granddaughter came in the room, climbed up in his lap, grabbed the two little hands and put it around his face, and she said, Papa, I want you to quit smoking so you can live to see me at my wedding. And she got out and went. It's a matter of the heart. Yeah. Huh? And because she had strings to his heart, looking into the innocent eyes, that look love me. She want me to be allowed to sit wet. From that day forward, he never smoked again because he loved something greater. He loved that granddaughter greater than the addict. And it broke it. When you begin to, that's why I said the first, when you love God with all your heart, nothing else can break your commitment to God. I let nothing separate me from the love of God. Alcohol, a man, a woman, a bad relationship, drugs, pills, pornography. When you fall in love with God and say, I love that, then it gives you the power See, it's not what you don't do, it's what you start. That's why Jesus said, y'all can't keep all these laws anyhow. But if you'll just love God with all of your heart and get before God like you did at this altar and get honest before God because it's a heart issue and get like David did in Psalms 51. Behold, I was born and shaped in iniquity and in sin my mother did conceive me. Against thee and thee only have I done this evil in thy sight. Oh God, I was born and shaped in iniquity but I want you to created me a clean heart it's a heart issue here renew within me the right spirit and when he got on it before God God power hit him praise God it's a matter of the heart when your heart changes, you'll change my wife taught on this but there are a lot of people that don't have don't love God with all their heart I've put up with a whole lot for this ministry, because I love you and I love the ministry. I'm passionate about the ministry. And it, it has caused me to enter into suffering, but that's okay. Because the, the scripture says, I think it's somewhere, Romans 8, about verse 14, 15, 16. The sufferings of this present world are not even worthy to be compared with the glory. Whatever I have to go to, because I'm passionate about what I do. You just don't have that hollering in your pulpit. You got a man in you? No, now you know you got a woman of God who loves you enough to tell you the truth. So whatever hard adjustment you need to make, make it. I didn't tell Joyce I was going to preach this. God is dealing with the spirit now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I ain't even gonna get into the aspect of sacrifice because the next thing is after passion, love, then there's sacrifice. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your pride. Sacrifice your time. I had to sacrifice my wife. She said, she says, I'm going to the room. I just let her go up there and say, some days you'll be up all preparing for that mess. That's okay. We ain't gonna go out and eat today. No problem. Why? Because she has passion for somebody. I want to do well. I want to do good. See, we're not willing to make the sacrifice, so you got to protect your heart. So he didn't say don't love mama. He didn't say don't love daddy. He said don't love her more than me. Because whoever you love the most is going, as I said, they're going to drive your behavior. Come on, you know what's the so. Sometimes you can train your kid like, what's that got into you? Someone is driving their behavior. But when you love God, let God's love drive your behavior. You have passion for him. So then true genuine worship, let me hear up. Because I don't know, and y'all ain't got nothing. To, I don't know why you didn't start the clock, so I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to go back. I got my own time. I know we're going to quit. So don't, don't come up here running with no clock. Oh, don't know if it ain't going to be long much longer. I got one more scripture. True genuine then worship is then how we reciprocate our love back to God. Huh? See, do you love God with all your heart, all your soul? Then, then that's what worship is, love responding back to love. It's a heart issue. True worship is a heart issue. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Matthew 8, there's something called vanity worship. Look at Matthew Look what Jesus said here. He says, this people draw near to me with their mouth, but their honor me with their lips, but their heart. There are a lot of people who just go through the motion. And I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just trying to tell you, God looks on the heart. He know what true worship is. When you just, I mean, you, when you truly, love, that means he's love. I love God more than money, life. I don't love God. If I lose my car, if I lose my clothes, if a house burned down, I'll still love God. I don't love, I'll, I'll worship you. It ain't about what I have. It ain't about what you've done or what you're going to do. I don't worry. It ain't about this or that. I don't care if I lose her. I will worship you. And I honor you with my heart. And notice Jesus said, this people, he's talking about those scribes and them doctors and lawyers, there are a lot of people go through all the motions, but their hearts, see, it's a heart issue. We're talking about the heart of the matter. Look at the next verse. He said about the, and in vain they do worship me. Teaching doctrines, commandments of men. Their vanity worship. Just going through the motions, man. People that's not really appreciative of what God has done. When you love God with all your heart, the house, the car you drove up in, the clothes on your back, your children, they're sitting beside you now. You just being alive, the air that you breathe, the job that you have. You might not have the job that you want, but you got a job. You may not have the car that you want, but you got a car. You may not have the house that you want, but you got a house. You may live in a neighborhood, but you won't. Your true worship is not about where I'm at or what I have. It's about I just love God. If I never get another car, I never suit. God saved me. Praise God, I was on my way to a death devil's hell. I was sinking to rise no more. I was down and out by the last count. Everybody kicked me to the curse. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was in the hall pen, but I cried out to my father and he took me back into his house. That's my son. He was once lost. He's now saying he was blind, but now he can see. True worship is remember all what God had done. It ain't about what type of car you have, what type of, what do you got on designer clothes. It ain't about this or that, where you live. It's about the fact that God loved me first. He loved me first. And the first and great commandment is to love him back. I love him more than mama. I love him more than daddy. I love him more than boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's got a different type of love. His love is not ordinary, <laughs> praise God. It's supernatural love. God love you in spite of yourself. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Praise God. His compassion shall not. His mercies are new every morning. You should have been dead in a devil's hell. But God had mercy on you. He held back death. He held back the bullet. He kept the car in the other lane. There's things seen and unseen the Lord has done for him. And God is looking for some true worshipers.
Matter of fact, put that up. That's my next scripture. The time will come. However, it's already here. Look at your neighbor and say, it's already here. When the true, genuine worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth, and Tom was singing it from their heart, not lip service, for the Father seeking such people like this as his worship. God is looking for folks that don't care what they drove up in, what they got on. Come hell or high water, God been good to me. All these folks that's gone through these hurricanes and tornadoes, folks that done died, done lost their home and stuff, done lost everything, no flood insurance, and here I am sitting up here well, got my body, got my mind, got my children. I got a lot to be grateful for. It shouldn't take no tragedy for you to realize God been good. That same storm could have came to your house, but God held back the storm. He held back the mugger. He held back the rock. He rebuked the devourer for your sake. And God says, I'm looking for some folks that love me first with all their heart. Waiting on God to do something. God already done something. Start praising God for what he's already done. What you already have. The car you do have. The job that you do have. I might can't live this on, but thank God I can move that one. So I'm going to praise God for this one. And I believe if I start praising God for this, that one will get healed. I believe if I start praising God for the knee that feels I believe the power of God will hit the other one. I'm going to... Why God inhabits the praises of the people. That word in heaven means God will get in that prayer. He'll sit down. He'll come in your house. He'll come in your car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul and Silas had been whipped and beat, sweat going down their scars. And they could have complained. But Paul said, you pray and I'll praise. And the Bible says at midnight, the closest, the darkest moment of your life, they begin to sing and praise God. And the Bible says when they begin to sing and worship God, the earth begin to shake, the prison begin to, and the chains fell off. The prison doors open. You want the chains of sickness, depression, to fall off of you, death? Start praising God at midnight. Someone said they broke out of prison. No, God broke in. He came and sit down. But it's a hard issue. Do you love them that much? To praise them even when there's tragedy. And I walked out here and I see Miss him and I know your heart is heavy and so is mine. But I saw you must that that praise God is still good. Hallelujah. He's in heaven. We gonna see him again. Gonna be a family reunion. He's up there putting a suit on Jesus right now. Saying, Lord, what, what size you wear, Jesus? Because Robert going to put a suit on you. Care who you are. We're talking about passion now. That goes beyond suffering. When you're in pain and suffering, but because I'm passionate, I still love God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. Oh, I got to stop. He did not, he did not, he did not fail me. Okay, so look at Mark 4 real quick. Mark 4. See, when you're following with us something greater, you're willing to suffer. When something is threatening your family, your life, you say, wait a minute. Who do I love the most? Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Three times. Why did he ask him three times in St. John 21, 15? Why? Because he had denied him three times. And so he had to publicly affirm him three times. He never got on about denying him. He never got on about, gave him a lecture about, why did you forsake me? He just questioned his love. Because if you love me, you're going to be there on the day of Pentecost. 
See, it's a heart issue. It's a matter of heart. Y'all guys got Matthew real quick. Matt, real quick, real quick. Matthew, I'm going to read this. My wife probably told on his show. I'm, Mark? Okay, Mark. We can read that too. Mark? I can teach from anywhere you want. Mark 4. Look at verse 14 through 20. And I'm, I'm going to be through because my wife, I know y'all, you know, she, but I just want to maybe lay a couple of little foundational things. Look at verse 14. Mark 4, 14. The sower sowed the, who am I? I'm the pastor. I'm sowing the word. And watch this. Because this whole parable, we miss it. We get into the ground and this. It was all about the heart. But when they have heard, like I'm teaching, guess what? Saint wait out there at your car. He coming to me to do what? Take away the word that was sown where? In their heart. In their heart. It ain't about the source, about the ground. Where's your heart at? What's in your heart? Satan don't want the word in your heart. Keep going. And I'll show you all the rest of this. And likewise, these are they that are sown on stony hearts, that means ground, who have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and do it for a time. They hear me preach, they come two or three times, they get excited, but they don't get in it for themselves. So guess what? When affliction and persecution arise for what? The word, the word say, who's trying to do that? The devil. He'll use friends, loved ones, offense, whatever. Notice that's what he said. Immediately they became offended. You know why? They weren't rooted and grounded in love. And these are they sown among thorns, thorny ground, thorny is heart. Such as hear the word, hey, hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things entering in, the lust of other things entering in. Entering in what? Your heart. You got to protect your heart with all diligence. Some of you let strife, offense, affliction, hearsay. The gateway to the heart is the ear. And when you just listen to anything, get anybody, it, it'll get in your heart. And you'll begin to talk about it because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. That's why I was the one want to call you up. Yeah, let me tell you the ladies. No, no you ain't going to contaminate my heart. I don't want to hear it. I'm, doing, I'm working on something. I ain't got time. I, can, I ain't letting that enter in. Why? It'll choke the word and it become it unfruitful. That's why some people get the next thing he's going to say. It ain't because God loves some people 34, 44. It's because people don't protect their heart. These are they which are sown on good ground or good heart. Such as hear the word and receive it. Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 100. The others didn't protect. God wants everyone to get 100. But you let all types of junk, gossip, junk, offense. He said, she said, somebody told me, girl, she's supposed to be printing my block. <laughs> then you wonder why you ain't getting nothing. You ain't protecting your heart. What is my statement out of this? Put it up. The soil can only sow the word. See, I can't control your heart. I can't, congr- I can't tell you what to listen to, who to talk to, what to think. It's your job. My wife brought that out. Protect your own heart. That ain't my job. My job is to prepare myself. Come share the word of God with you. Be totally transparent. And it's up to you what you're going to receive. Your heart. I can't control the ground of the heart. Proverbs 4, 23. My wife read this, but you can read it again. Keep, guard your heart with all that for out of it flows the issues of life. If you put the word and guard your heart, that word can deal with cancer, sickness, disease, death. There's enough power in you. If you guard your heart and keep it clean, creating me a clean heart. Because see, you can have a filthy spirit. You have a clean body. Clean clothes, clean shoes. Man, they were sharp, but the heart was ugly. So you got to guard your heart. Not me. That ain't my job. I do my job. Why are some people getting some, some people getting blessed? Well, maybe God loved them. No, it's you. It's the ground. It's the ground. You got to keep the bugs out. You got to tilt the ground. You got to pull out the weeds. You got to water it. It's your job. My job ain't what you do all that. It's your God. It's your heart. Now, put up uh, this. Oh, Jerusalem, wash your heart. Oh, my God. What? Yeah, your heart can be filtered. 
2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, having these beloved promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the heart. You can have strife. You can come in here and have all types of hidden stuff. Look what he said. That you might be saying, how long will your iniquitous, grossly offensive thoughts, Lord, that shows you your mind. Love thing. There you go. Well, she ain't so and so and so. She ain't speak. See, you let that junk get in you and it's larger than you. Offense will come, but don't let it lodge in you because it's going to fester and it's going to do what my wife says. It's going to create bitterness. It's going to trouble you. And then you're going to become, you're going to, and what happens when people let stuff get down in them? They become a, what's the word? Um, dog. Not just pulled out of focus, but they become, someone give me a word. Distract, that's good, but that ain't the one I want. What's that? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's when you, something is there, but it's not really happening. Delusional. They become delusional. The devil starts messing with the head. Well, look at her. She ain't even the, the reason that. See, that's you and the devil. You're delusional. Why? You let some laws in you. And you begin to process in the negative everything. Well, the reason son, son, shook her hand, but now, because I know I seen them talking down there. See, you're delusional. That's you and the devil trying to get something in your heart. If you read the book of Matthew, it talks about the wheat and the tares are sown. And while men slept, the enemy, the devil trying to sow stuff just like God is trying to sow stuff. If you go listening to the devil, looking at the devil, protect your eyes, ears, because that stuff will get in your heart. In the middle of the word heart, what is the three words? So if you hear something, it's going to get in the middle of your heart. And that's how junk get down in folk. Yo, yo, you have, that's this even better word, distorted perception. You begin to perceive everything wrong. You hear everything. You, you hear it, see, but it means something because of offense. You're looking at eyes of offense. So everything is distorted. The children of Israel will have distorted vision. They said, we have grasshoppers on our side and, and so we and I. Why? Because they was in fear. Something that got in their heart other than what God said. All right, let me close. I think I might be done. Didn't I tell y'all about old Tommy? So you got to love something greater. You want to give me the scripture on that? It's Hebrews 11. Willpower alone, they cannot stop the addictive habits. Go on and put up the whole thing. You got to love something greater. Willpower alone. Well, it cannot, when you, when you, it, 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 he wanted to quit smoking, but until he realized I love my grandbaby more than I do, the taste that I get of this nicotine, it broke it. See, it's not what you start, it's what you start when you love God with all your heart. Because when you love God that way, he won't let some type of bondage hold you. The power of God will be there to set you free. So now Hebrews 11, 25 to for by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Notice, refuse. Everyone say refuse. Now, once you refuse the addiction, refuse the temptation, refuse the bondage, refuse the abuser, now you got to choose. He chose what? Rather to suffer. There's the love part again. Passion. He had passion toward God. Affliction with the people of God. Then enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Don't trade a lifetime blessing for a temporary lust. Amen. Go back and get the tape. Keep going. Because see, later on, you'll be like Esau, who sold his birthright because he was hungry for a, a, a pot of beans. But later on, see, people get under pressure, love star, and this and that. But when you love God greater, you say, no, I made a decision. He considered the contempt and abuse and the shame born that Christ the Messiah who was to come. I ain't here yet. See, when, when, until you find something greater in your future that's better than your past, you won't change. You got to learn. You got to love something more in your future. He says, watch this, to be greater. He loved God greater than all the treasures of Egypt for he looked forward and away to the world. Forward and away. 
Keep your eyes on four and in the The phone number come up. You know the dude ain't no good. But he know you weak. Look forward and away. And I say, I love God. And until you love something in your future more than something out of your past, it won't break. He looked forward and away. Forward and away. Because the minute you say goodbye, I love God. I ain't putting up with this more. Whatever it was, drugs, alcohol, this abuser. It's a decision you make. Okay? So, with that said, folks, with that said, folks, I'm going to close with this statement. Jesus is saying, do you love me? You remember what the little girl said? Papa, I want you to quit smoking so you can come to my wedding. He said the same thing. Whatever you have allowed to take the place of this love in your life, whether it's addiction or person or drugs or relationship, he said, I want you back. I love you. He said the exact same thing. I want to see you at my wedding. I close with Revelations 19, 7, 9. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. There's something forward. Huh? There's going to be a wedding. His wife, with the bride, have been made ready. Huh? And to her was granted, that's you and I, that we should be arrayed a church with fine linen, clean and white. Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Verse 9, and he said to me, right, blessed are they, which are called, there's a call, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He said to thee that the truth God, God is saying the exact same thing. I love you. Do you love me? Because when you love someone, you want to marry. And he said, I want you to be at my wedding. I want you to be at my wedding. I don't want drugs, alcohol, or person, or offense, or hatred, or something you let in your heart. Stop you. Don't let nothing separate you from the wedding. Just come in the wedding. I love you. See, when you're having a marriage, come on. That ain't the time you begin to think. Well, you, it, you done been through the all hell. You done suffered. This is the day. It's on now. You in that room. Here come the, the, the ring bearer, the flower girl. Come on. And the thing that's bringing everyone is love. You are saying I love this woman more than mama that the man shall forsake my boyfriend, girlfriend. I love, Jesus is saying the same thing. You're my bride. There's gonna be a marriage supper to him that overcome it. Don't let somebody else love something more than me. The first and great command is to love me with all your heart. So who you gonna put before me? I love you. Do you love me? Well, I want you at my wedding. Stand on your feet and give God some praise.